Hi, my, hi, my name is Elizabeth Shively, and I live right here in Grandin. Um, I'm also speaking on the same topic. Thanks for your time. At first, I thought that I'd tell my story about how it felt to see these messages for the first time, the impact it had on me, all the emotions I felt. Then I realized how many times that story has been told. In my case, I'd be lucky enough to tell a story about a school shooting that never happened. And while I do feel very lucky to be able to say that it never happened, I'm uneasy because of some to seem, I'm uneasy because I feel uncomfortable about what's gonna happen in the future. What this child did is not negated because of lack of follow through. In fact, on a scale from least to worst offenses, the only thing worse than threatening to murder teachers and fellow students is doing so. So he did the worst thing he could have done short of committing the actual crimes. If he is allowed to return to school, it will not just be this student who receives the message that the red lines are faint and the consequences for severe actions are slightly uncomfortable, but mostly manageable. It will be his classmates and the kids in other schools who learned that there's a fifth grader from Grandin Court who threatened to shoot his teachers and classmates and they let him come back to that same school that year. Like many, I've read all the text messages and seen all the photos. I see a young boy asserting himself, using violence and the meme of mass murder as a way of exhibiting power. When I asked my child, who is, the, who is one of his classmates, where was this boy a lonely, disliked loser or a cool kid? I was told he was not just a cool kid, he was the kind of kid who chose who was cool and who wasn't. While I'm sure it may suit the narrative for him and his family that it was a misguided, ultimately harmless cry for help, those of us in this community shouldn't accept that for face value. It's every bit as plausible that he's growing an inflated sense of himself as a tough, powerful figure. He enjoys the flex. He said he doesn't have to worry about the police because he's going to shoot the police. This should go a long way towards shining the light on his state of mind. It sounds much less like a cry for help than a power trip. This should leave an unforgettable mark on his life and everyone around him, especially and maybe mostly his parents. The gossip in the hallways of Grandin Court and other schools should be, did you hear what happened to that fifth grader? They're not messing around with this. None of the kids in this school deserve to spend their days asking themselves if this student is going to hurt them. None of the parents of the kids of this school deserve to wonder if their kid is safe from him acting out. None of the teachers need to wonder if he finally found a real gun and brought it to school for them today. Even if this was a flex, a threat that never materialized, the only acceptable message is that the lines are read as can be. He crossed them and there will now be consequences. Rather than trying to get consequences softened, this child should be thinking about how to change his future behavior. May I please continue? I'm almost done. Well, everybody gets three minutes. We have some other speakers, okay, but, but if you have your comments in writing, please give them to our um, clerk so that we can all read them. All right. Thank, thank you, you ma'am.